Proper drug delivery is essential for the effective treatment of the use of pharmaceuticals. If a drug is released properly, it can raise the overall effectiveness by increasing cellular uptake. The purpose of this experiment is to investigate the factors which affect the release of drugs from a hydrogel bead. Drug delivery technologies are an essential building block of modern medicine. Presently, the pharmaceutical industry is spending an increasing amount of money to develop targeted drug delivery. For example, a drug release profile that only targets cancerous tissue while leaving surrounding healthy tissue unharmed. It is critical for scientists and engineers to understand the underlying mechanisms of absorption and mass transfer, which are key for making more efficient drug delivery systems. In this experiment, we will be using tartrazine as a model drug, which is a yellow food dye. We will be measuring the release of tartrazine through the use of UV vis at 427 nanometers. The chemical formula of tartrazine can be seen in this figure. The tartrazine in this experiment will be released from hydrogel cross-linked beads. We used sodium alginate and cross-linked in calcium chloride solution mixed with tartrazine. The cross-linking mechanism can be seen in this figure. This will cause the calcium ions to displace the sodium ions on the monomer chains, thus linking the chains into one large macromolecule. After our data has been collected, we can use an experimental diffusion model to predict the time-dependent release of tartrazine. As seen in the equation, where mt is the mass released at any given time, m infinity is the final concentration of dye released, k is the bead diffusion properties, and n is related to the mode of transport and geometry of the system. For Fickian diffusion in a sphere, n is equal to 0.43. There are three solutions that need to be made for this experiment. The first solution consists of 0.5 grams per liter tartrazine in distilled water. The second is 6% by weight calcium chloride solution mixed in with 0.5 grams per liter tartrazine with distilled water. Solution three is 0.1 grams of sodium alginate dissolved in 10 milliliters of 0.5 grams per liter tartrazine solution. The first step is to make the calcium chloride solution. Make sure to crush the powder before putting the calcium chloride into the weight boat. Tear and measure the desired amount of calcium chloride. In order to dissolve your solution, place a stirring rod in your beaker that has your mixture and place them on a stir plate until no solids are seen. Repeat steps for solution 3. Pipette out the desired amount, making sure to evenly mix like shown. Use varying concentrations of tartrazine to make your calibration curve. Your cuvettes should span from pure distilled water to more concentrated tartrazine similar to what is shown. When taking your spectrometer readings, first set your spectrometer to 427 nanometers and wipe your cuvette with a Kim wipe. Then correctly place the cuvette in the machine as shown. This is our calibration curve. Pour the calcium chloride solution into your weigh boat till it's half full. Then pipette 3 milliliters of your alginate solution and dropwise make your desired amount of beads. Pour your solution out into a coffee filter or Kim wipe and carefully scrape your beads onto a weigh boat. Next, place the distilled water beaker on your stir plate and set the desired stir rate. Put your beads in the bath and start taking UV measurements every 10 minutes until the optical density plateaus. When taking your measurements, pipette 3 milliliters of solution into your pipette, making sure not to take up any beads. Pour your solution back into the beaker after the reading. There are many variables that could be tested in this experiment. High versus low viscosity of alginate, temperature, and stir rate, etc. The variables that we specifically examined started with changing the tartrazine concentration in our beads. We also explored the cross-linking time of the beads. Finally, how changing agitation rate affects the way the dye diffuses. The table shown represents all the data for our agitation rate experiment. It contains both the geometric shape exponent and diffusion constant along with standard deviations. When the RPM of the system is around 260, we observe Fickian diffusion as n is 0.44. When the RPM is lower, we notice that the diffusion is driven by non-Fickian interactions as seen in the 140 RPM and 200 RPM trial. Additionally, we notice that the K value goes up as RPM increases. Lastly, we notice error in our 200 RPM trial was extremely high as noted by our standard deviation. This was most likely caused by human error 
such as improper dispensing of liquid from the syringe and putting the cuvette improperly in the UV spectrometer. This graph shows data taken from another group. It shows the dye fraction as a function of time while comparing different concentrations of tartrazine. The concentrations tested were 0.125 grams per liter of tartrazine, 0.25 grams per liter of tartrazine, and 0.5 grams per liter of tartrazine. As you can tell by the graph, the concentration of tartrazine in the solution has little to no effect on the fraction of dye released. The last trend that we tested was how crosslinking time affects the diffusion. As seen on figure 9, the crosslinking time of 5 to 10 minutes shows a large difference in the diffusion that is observed. The diffusion occurs more rapidly when the crosslinking is only allowed to occur for 5 minutes. As the crosslinking time is increased, we observe the expected result that the diffusion rate would be decreased. When looking at the crosslinking time of 10 and 15 minutes, there is little difference in the amount that they diffuse when compared to each other. This is most likely due to the fact that the cross-linking reaction has been allowed to reach an equilibrium after a length of time that is greater than 10 minutes. As seen in previous figures, there is a relatively large amount of error in our results. This may have been caused by a multitude of error sources. One error source that we noticed was that we had inconsistent timing in both our cross-linking time and data collection. The next source of error that we noticed is the inaccuracies caused by the syringe because the syringe would sometimes expel multiple droplets at a time, making it difficult to count. Lastly, we noticed that while scraping the beads, especially in the smaller sizes, some of them could break. All of these sources of error could have led to relatively high standard deviations among our trials. The main results to take away were that at 260 RPM, the diffusion was mostly Fickian. This was given by our N value of 0.44. Overall, we suggest that these results be repeated because we had high error percentages. The next two trends that were observed were that changing the dye concentration does not matter because the alternate controls the diffusion more than the tartrazine. The last trend that we observed was that after 10 minutes, the crossing time does not affect the dye diffusion rates.